Hi all, welcome. Welcome all. So good to see you here. It would be great if you could type in the chat your name, uh, your faith, and where you're calling in from. Welcome all. It's so wonderful to see in the chat where everyone is from. I see Oregon, Michigan, California, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, <clears throat> Patrick in Connecticut, truly calling from all across the country. Well, thank you all for being here. It's so lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, my name is William. I am an organizer here at Green Faith, working on our People versus Fossil Fuels campaign, and I'm co-facilitating today uh, with the Reverend Chelsea, Chelsea McMillan, our climate finance campaign organizer. Um, this is part of our Climate Finance Summit series, and so if you haven't been on any of these other calls, um, Green Faith is a worldwide grassroots interfaith climate justice movement, and we are holding this um, climate finance summit so we can connect the dots between our faith, our finances, and the fossil fuel industry. We're also here to take bold action together in moving our money as individuals and institutional investors. So Chelsea, if we could, let's take a quick look at the week so far. Um, for some of you, this might be your third session. For some, your first. Um, this is part of our series that we got going on. Um, so hope you were all at the opening session on Monday. Uh, we had another session earlier today. And right now we are on our spiritual practices for resilience, our bonus session. So thank you so much for joining us. And tomorrow, we have climate finance on the ground. Thursday is our action hour, and we have another bonus session on Friday, values investing for faith institutions endowments. So we hope to see you all at some or all of these calls. It is a very full week of learning and of taking action together, but tonight's going to be a little different. Um, tonight is a time for us to slow down and to connect with each other. We want to use this time to remember that we are faith first and that our practices are what ground us in the ongoing work of the climate crisis. We want to recognize that this is an interfaith or a multi-faith space, and we want to honor where we are all coming from. 
from different traditions, even no traditions, we recognize there, that there are some commonalities, some differences, but our diversity of traditions, practices, and spiritualities is truly our strength. So translate you know, our language, our prayers, as you need to for it to speak to you and your tradition and your faith and your background, and just know that everyone, every faith is welcome here. So a little overview of our agenda, we'll talk briefly about the importance of slowing down and how our spiritual practice is not separate from taking action. Then we'll do some practices together and we're gonna share together. First, we'll have a practice led by Nobuko Hori from Brooklyn Zen Center, Iko Sapas, followed by small group sharing. And then we'll have a practice led by Eileen Flanagan from Earthquaker Action Team. And we'll go back into those small groups again. And after that, we're going to do some gleaning from our group wisdom on spiritual, spiritual practices that we all use to keep us grounded in this time. Chelsea, I'll pass it to you. Thanks, William. So like William said, tonight is uh, a little bit more about slowing down and just getting really present with ourselves and each other and hopefully the earth. And one reason that this is so important is that um, is that in in slowing down, we're actually starting to dismantle the systems in which we live like capitalism and white supremacy culture these things constantly drive us forward it's like go 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 faster 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 more and bigger is better but by slowing down and actually um saying no to that is a big part in in changing in changing the world and and i'm and i don't feel like i'm exaggerating by saying that um our actions are part of that and and you know, we're, we're actually not differentiating between our spiritual practice and our public action because those are uh, the same. And, and we'll talk about how we can use our practice as disruption out in the public sphere. Um, but there are different rhythms that we can tap into. You know, the earth goes through cycles of growth and then decay. Um, cycles of the sun rising in the morning and then setting at night. And so giving ourselves time to really give time and space to just quieting down is really important. And, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of that quote that I think is some sometimes attributed to the Dalai Lama, although I don't know that it's accurately attributed to him. But, um, but the quote is like, if you're too busy to meditate for 20 minutes a day, then meditate for an hour. And sometimes it feels counterintuitive in this culture that most of us are, are embodying every day. So by embodying something different, we can actually change the way that our organizing happens. Um, and this, is, this really has some direct impacts. Uh, we know that the climate crisis is a crisis of greed. And we'll say this over and over again in during our climate finance summit. Um, banks and asset managers and the fossil fuel industry are operating on that model of growth at any cost. And so as we're as we're taking them to account and saying, no, we don't want this anymore. We want sustainable practices. We also have to do that for ourselves. Where in our own lives do we think that bigger or more is always better? Where in our own lives do we feel challenged to slow down? What if in, instead we ebbed and flowed with the rhythm of the seasons? So it, it, it sort of makes it like our, our spiritual practices are not just about putting fuel back into the tank. We're actually becoming more connected to ourselves, each other, the earth, becoming more connected to spirit or God or however you imagine something greater than yourselves it's really about tapping into a deep wellspring and then something kind of happens where the more we do that we can let go of outcomes and find out and discover what happens when we're tapping into something greater than ourselves and let that lead us forward so again and actually i don't know if, if any of you have heard this quote but bio komalafe excuse me, Bio Akomo Lafe says, times are urgent, let us slow down. So again, this is a call for us 
to slow down in the midst of all of this urgency and see how our organizing and our actions can look and feel different. Uh, Will, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, thanks, Chelsea. Um, so much for that reminder. I love that quote that times are urgent, so let's slow down. Um, <clears throat> When I was thinking on this topic and of slowing down, um, the book Braiding Sweetgrass came to mind. I'm sure many of you have read it. Um, if you haven't, it is by Robin Wall Kimmerer. She is a botanist. Oh, I see it there, Linda. <laughs> she is also a poet and an enrolled member of the Potawatomi Nation. And this book is on indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teachings of plants. And <clears throat> her invitation to us in this book is she offers the learnings of plants, things that we only notice when we are still, when we have slowed down, things that we only notice when we are paying attention, the things that the earth um, is singing and shouting at us, but we're too busy to hear. Slowing down allows us to live in this reciprocal relationship with the land. We're able to offer gratitude. We're able to offer blessings and love and to receive the same. And so, um, yeah, I think we often just rush through life and we bypass the wisdom that exists all around us. And so I um, highly recommend that book. Um, and just it's so, it so struck me um, the first time I read it and I realized how much I was missing um, from what was going on around me. So back to you, Jesse. Yeah, thanks for bringing that into the space, William. And uh, and I just want to be clear that this doesn't mean that we don't take action um, and that, in fact, our practice becomes the, the action and becomes the disruption. Um, and and actually, we have two wonderful guests here tonight who will be who will be leading us in some practices and uh, who I've I've both known and and actually with Nobuko, we've been in action together. We've brought our our spiritual practice into into action together, and um, and I know that Eileen also has with Earthquaker Action. So it's really an honor to have both of you here today. And, uh, and Nobuko is actually going to start us off, and just as a little more of an introduction um, to Nobuko. Um, Nobuko is a Master of Divinity student at Union Theological seminary in the Buddhism and interreligious engagement program. She's been involved in faith-based activism since 2013 and including the indigenous-led Stop Line 3 movement in Minnesota in 2021. Um, last year she helped start restart the Mindful Rebels. So Mindful Rebels is an Extinction Rebellion uh, New York City chapter affinity group and she helped restart their weekly sits outside of BlackRock headquarters. Um, and now she co-facilitates the Eco Sattvas, which is an affinity group of the Brooklyn Zen Center. So super excited to have you here with us, Novako, and um, please take it away. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, so, hi everyone. I, um, I'm gonna be leading a practice. And so first, I just like to invite everyone to find you know, I'm sure you're in a comfortable seat. I'd make some additional invitations to if your feet maybe aren't touching the floor, maybe find help your feet to sort of make contact with the floor or if that's comfortable, of course, I want to acknowledge all bodies are different and have different needs. So putting centering that first. So let's take some deep breaths, grounding in the breath. And before I move into a guided meditation, I'd like to make some invitations to consider. And during this time, you can feel free to close your eyes or you can keep your eye, your sort of eyes partially open in a relaxed posture. So, and of course, if any of these invitations don't resonate with you, that's also okay. So much of our Western cultural and colonial conditioning has a fixation on linear time, on past, on future, 
and specifically on progress and betterment. But what if part of our crisis is because of our fixation on progress and a future that is more important than the here and now, where we can extract as a means to a better end? Many ancient and indigenous traditions understand ourselves and make meaning not through the notion of time, but in terms of interrelatedness. How am I showing up in the here and now in all of my relations, all of my relationships? How am I showing up in this body in relationship to Mother Earth with all of my people? And not just human people, but the tree people, the plant people, even the rat and the insect people. How is this body showing up with other bodies? So I'm inviting everyone into a guided meditation to enter our bodies more fully and to feel into our body's subtle energy. So again, bringing our attention to our feet. And if your feet are maybe making contact with the floor, you can wiggle your toes a little bit. Just pay attention to any sensations that you feel. Maybe there's tingling or numbness. Our feet have hundreds, maybe thousands of nerve endings that are intended to help us take information from the earth and from our surroundings. Just to like to imagine the feet making contact there on the floor, but really with the, the layers of earth, I can imagine the earth's molten core and all the layers and layers of earth, the fossils, sediment, rock, soil, plants, all of that energy radiating up through the earth and our bodies receiving that energy through our feet, through that contact that our feet are making, moving, feeling that energy through our body, up through our crown, up through the head, towards the sky. And again, receiving that energy down through our head, down to our body and back out the feet, back to the earth. All the while just remembering to take deep breaths through the lower belly. And here from the feet, we'll continue a body scan. So again, noticing the sensations in the feet, moving up through the legs and calves and sit bones, hips. Maybe feeling the sensation of our body being held in a chair or wherever you might be sitting, lying, or standing. And again, really just letting the breath rise and fall through the lower belly. And then moving up through the chest into the heart center, taking a couple deep breaths here, breathing in, and breathing out, taking another deep breath in and out. And moving up into the shoulders. If you wanna roll your shoulders out a little bit, feel free to do so.
moving down through the arms, through the hands, just noticing the sensations, especially noticing the sensation of your hands making contact, maybe they're lying in your lap or light or resting on a chair. Again, moving back up through your arms and up through the neck and the head. And just notice in your face if there's any tension. Just trying to soften, let it go. We'll return back to Breathing through the lower belly, we'll take a few more deep breaths together. Taking a deep breath in and letting it out. And another breath in and out. One more deep breath in and out. When you're ready, and you gently open your eyes. Thank you all for joining in this practice. And I believe at this time, we're going to be um, moving into breakout groups to reflect together on what came up for you in doing this practice. Maybe you have a reflection on the contemplation um, or specifically, what did you notice about your body um, your body or your breath from the beginning to where you're arriving now? Is there something that you noticed, something present for you? Um, what was it like to attune to where your body is? Um, so from here, I believe Chelsea is going to move, um, is going to create breakout groups of about three to four people. Um, and I can also put the uh, prompts in the chat for everybody as well. Okay, we'll send people to breakouts and then we can broadcast the prompt. What did, what did you notice? We'll see you back here in, in about seven minutes. So just give each other some space. It'll be three to four people um, and make sure everybody, everybody gets to share. Oh, Donna, did you not get a group? Hold on a second. Oh, there she goes. Okay, I hope that worked out. <laughs> I'm gonna pause the recording. I haven't finished my work. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, Nana. <laughs> yeah, I was like in the midpoint and it's like, oh. <laughs> Okay, I think everyone's back.
So welcome back, everyone. Um, so this time we have some time to kind of debrief as a group and share out um, to the larger group some of the things that were harvested in your small group conversations. Um, how many do we have about six minutes or how much time do we have for this, Chelsea? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe five, five, six minutes, if that's okay. Minutes. Okay. So maybe, um, maybe at least one person from every group can share um, a little bit about what was maybe surfacing in your, in your group in response to some of these prompts. And so I'd maybe say like, you know, use the raise hand function um, to share. Who'd like to go first? Peter. So we all had a practice of breathing and meditation uh, coming into this. And so for some of us, it was a reawakening of past experiences with it. Others were presently doing it. Um, we also um, do movement, um, sort of prayer and motion. So walking in nature and, and doing quiet contemplation, meditation and prayer is another practice that resonated with us or imagining being out in nature, um, which is what I personally do when I meditate. But um, all of us felt the need to slow down and to be more calm. And so that was a, a common feeling too. Thanks so much. Pastor Nancy. Hi, we all, um, you know, experienced a release of tension as we felt our bodies. And one member has been especially active in, in um, his denomination's work to pass um, fossil fuel divestment. And it's been very frustrating. He could feel it in his body, but his he mentioned that his jaw relaxed and so on. So we were very appreciative of, of that approach. Thank you. Thanks so much. Tulane, if I'm pronouncing your name right. Tulane, you'll just need to unmute. Julaine. Are we getting audio? Yeah. Yeah, I think we still can't hear you, Julaine. You're unmuted, but you were unmuted and we still couldn't hear you. Try one more time. No, sorry. Do you want to type in the chat what you were going to say? Because we can't hear you. Sorry. Feel free to share in the chat what you were experiencing. Maybe in the meantime, if, uh, I don't know, are there other groups that haven't shared out yet? Marty. You'll also need to unmute. Our, our group sort of ignored your instructions. We took the time to, to get to know one another better and, uh, and speak about uh, issues that are very concerning to us and particularly how, how Green Faith is supporting our, our initiatives trying to deal with uh, fossil fuel-based projects in our areas. We cover geographically the areas all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast with two in the middle of the country. So it was, it was great to get to meet people who are uh, advocates, allies in this uh, fight against or for creating a green, uh, healthy environment. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mike, I see you have your hands up. I, uh, I was struck by the meditation of the awareness of the earth below me and the layers and layers and layers of earth going down to the the fire that's down the core of the earth. And that, that was so new for me to think about that and add that to my meditation. I always think of in meditation, which I do either um, 
not walking or walking and moving and I do a lot of movement uh, as it is and I'm a student of hula and uh, I just find those really meditative but this added a whole dimension to that um, and so thank you for adding that uh, that piece thank you really great the idea of being grounded is like uh, that was visceral <laughs> Thanks. June. Thank you. Uh, uh, all the members of uh, my little group uh, do have some sort of a meditation practice. Um, and um, one person was actually meditating for someone else who was ill and realized that the meditation was really as important, maybe more important for herself than for the other person. And that just doing 15 minutes, 10 minutes, even one minute a day of becoming present can make such a huge difference for ourselves and for the world. Thank you for that share. I think that's probably all the shares that we have time for. Thank you all. So now we'll, now we'll turn it over to Eileen. Eileen Flanagan is the Director of Strategy and Partnerships for Earthquaker Action Team and is also an, an, an award-winning author. Before following a call to work for climate justice, Eileen wrote primarily about spirituality and taught at the Quaker Retreat Center Pendle Hill. And I'm really excited for you, Eileen, to share with us now your practice and lead us. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Um, I think it really builds on what we've been doing and what people have been sharing. One of the things Earthquaker Action do, uh, Team does is use the Quaker practice of silent prayer actually in action. So um, we have had 50 people sitting in silence praying outside a CEO's house recently, the CEO of Vanguard. Um, we have interrupted shareholder meetings with silent prayer, um, which gets a different kind of attention than interrupting a shareholder me meeting with shouting. <laughs> um, but we've used it in all kinds of ways. Um, and so what I'm going to do is uh, introduce people to grounding silence, which it sounds like <clears throat> silence by itself will not be new for many of you. But the spin I wanna put on it is I want you to think of this as practice in grounding yourself for a situation that might be out of your comfort zone in your work for the earth um, or for climate justice, however you describe what we're doing here. So for someone, it maybe you are thinking of interrupting a shareholder meeting for the first time and really want to be grounded in your best self. Maybe you're doing divestment work and you're anticipating a difficult conversation with members of your faith community. Maybe you are about to do your first press interview. Whatever the thing is, I want to give you a moment to just think of a scenario that you could imagine yourself doing where you would want to be particularly grounded and could easily show up with some anxiety. I wonder if people could give me a nod or a thumb or a wave if you've got a situation. Great. Um, for those who don't yet, uh, you can just listen to the rest of the instructions and see kind of what situation comes to you. Um, my invitation is to imagine using silence in that situation. And so it might be that you just take a moment to actually, like we've actually also met with executives and said, we want to ask for a moment of prayer before we start the meeting, uh, which really helps us and also really confuses them, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, it might be something like that. It might be that you want to just sit in the hall for a minute before you do the scary thing. So just imagine that situation. And then I want to invite you to explore 
what might help you in that situation. Maybe it's the same thing you do every day when you meditate. Maybe you want to go back to this new tool of thinking of the fire in the core of the earth. Um, I know some people who, when they want to ground, they really want to close their eyes and focus inward. And I know other people who really want to look for a blade of grass or a tree in the distance or something like that. Could be breath. There's so many options and it sounds like many of you are practiced in meditation. So we're just gonna spend um, the next five minutes in silence. And I want you to explore trying to hold this situation that might cause stress and ground yourself at the same time and notice what you find most helpful.
Thank you, everyone. You can bring your attention back to the group. Before we go into small groups again, I'll say that um, I noticed that the interrupting a shareholder meeting with silent prayer got some attention in the chat. Um, on one occasion when we did that, we had practiced the night before. And I remember saying during the training, like, this isn't a skit. We're not like performing religion in order to look cool or sympathetic or something like this will only work if we really are grounded in prayer. And we had to name what we were going to do to help us really be grounded in that moment, uh, especially if anything scary happened. And then it turned out that the funny thing that happened was I was the only person from our group who got into the shareholder meeting because they enforced some technicality on the proxies we had. Um, so I was really, really glad that we had said ahead of time, this is what I'm going to do to help myself stay grounded. Um, because then I knew like, okay, that's the thing I need to do. Um, so that's the invitation really for the next small group is to share, and you're going to be back with the same people, um, to share what tools you think would work for you, maybe what worked for you in this exercise. Um, maybe you have been in a similar situation and you can share what worked for you in that situation. Um, but basically what tools, whether it's prayer or thinking of scripture or doing the body scan or breathing, uh, there's a wide range of tools available to us. Uh, and one of my favorite authors, Tara Moore says, everybody needs a fear toolkit. So this is kind of like, what's your spiritual toolkit for a scary situation? Um, and again, you're going to go into small groups for several minutes. Um, who have we got here? Elizabeth, I'm going to send you. I get a little more water. Elizabeth, did you have trouble getting into the breakout room or were you just opting out of the breakout room? Oops, I'm gonna pause this. Welcome back everyone or some. Hello, welcome back. Um, so again, we're just going to take a few minutes to hear from a few folks about um, anything that came up in your group, um, common themes, new insights uh, in particular are welcome. And I think I'd issue a special invitation to anyone who didn't speak the last time, uh, but anyone is, is welcome to raise their hand. Uh, Kim, have you unmuted? No. All right, how about Leah? I am going to try speaking. Am I? Oh, good, didn't work last time, so. Um, yeah, some things that I'm jotting down notes about. Ooh, things to do because uh, as a Zen Buddhist, we're kind of like, well, we're sitting zazen. That's yay. You know, there's not a lot else to do, <laughs> but the um, 
the singing part. I'm like, oh my gosh, singing. Yeah, someone in our group mentioned singing together. And the fact that you're with friends, you're with people that you know, uh, is, is very, disperses the anxiety a bit. Um, someone in the group said, noticing your, your feet, focusing on the ground physically, like noticing your feet. Um, and then uh, my thing, the only thing I could come up with was just practicing, you know, like speaker head said before practicing, running for it so that you know what you're gonna do. Um, or at least you kind of, things always happen differently than you expect and just know that that's to be expected. And then training, like NVDA training um, for any group is, is, that's going to do anything is really useful. Thank you. Yes, I affirm all of that, and especially the training part, if, uh, if nonviolent direct action is something you're exploring. Who else? Uh, Peggy. Hi. Um, so uh, a couple of things is, uh, as I was in the silence, I realized that it changed my focus from being on myself and how I was feeling uncomfortable to thinking more about the other person and what they might want to get out of the interaction. And it made me realize that, yes, I could probably do what they wanted to get out of the interaction, uh, assuming they're a person of goodwill, and, and it would be fine. But just that idea of taking the focus off myself really helped. Thank you, Peggy. How about one more? Uh, Nancy. So um, we thought there was, uh, this came up, that we thought it was kind of important to create something of what we would consider sacred space with our silence, or not necessarily total silence, but that we would lower our voices so that it would be more like uh, meditative kind of voices if we were talking, and that we wouldn't consider the person that we're talking to and trying to convince to do something an enemy, that we would uh, consider that person with loving care and think about the system maybe as the enemy, but not the person. And um, I guess there was one other thing that we that we had in common, that, that it was much easier to go to a kind of action in a group. Um, let's say go to a protest in Vanguard where we don't know anybody that we're trying to confront than to go to our own husband in one case or to uh, our own banker in another case. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Nancy. And I see Donna has her hands up. So let's do um, hear from Donna and then I'll pass it back to Chelsea and Will. Um, yes, I... Um, kind of related a, a, an action that I was involved with um, um, in protesting a legislator who had a very um, nasty stance <laughs> on a subject that I won't go into. But um, we were warned ahead of time that there were going to be particular people within the group that might be targeted by security. So, um, we were just warned ahead of time to try and kind of surround that a person if they started coming toward them. And so um, they did start coming toward a person that was right in front of me. And so I just kind of calmly walked up to the person and re reached my hands out around them. And then the, another person just naturally came and put their arms around and another person came and we just surrounded that person calmly. And, and then I was just, I was just praying let them know love, let them know peace, let them know love, let them know peace. And they backed away. They backed away. Thank you. It can so work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for experimenting with me. Thank you so much, Eileen. Um, 
And in just a moment, we're going to kind of keep on this, keep uh, going on this conversation about practices that help us. Um, but before we do that, I just want to sort of like lean into what one thing that Eileen said about this isn't a skit, that it's actually really important to practice these things. It makes me think about, and so then I'm like, I'm sort of zeroing in on the word practice. Um, there's something about like discipline here and really, really training ourselves in, in these practices. And it makes me think of, um, the civil rights era where, you know, they were practicing their nonviolent direct action beforehand. Um, but they had to do that because the, the reaction that happens or can happen in the midst of intense high energy situations can sometimes really take us out of a more, balanced, calm, centered place. Um, so I feel like, I feel like leaning into that is really important here and really, um, really like focusing on our practices as a way of, of, um, you know, as, as a mode of spiritual discipline. Um, and again, kind of moving away from thinking of our practices is just like putting, putting fuel in the tank. Like, I think about um, how Google, like Google executives started implementing meditation to make their their workers like more efficient. And like, that's not the point of any of this. It's like the point is the practice itself. We're always faith first. And so I think this is just a good reminder to keep tapping into what's most life-giving for us. And that's where we, that's where we really get resilience and sustainability as opposed to just like, taking something out and putting it back in and taking it out and putting it back in that we're actually like living into a new rhythm. We're living into cycles. Um, we're embodying the earth. Uh, and so I, I just want to invite us all to hold that with us as we continue, continue on this path of climate justice work. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to William. Thanks everyone for sharing in those practices together with us. Thanks, Chelsea, for that reminder that as human beings, we're spiritual beings. Um, and period, it's not used uh, for us to be productive <laughs> or anything like that, um, but that we just are. So I appreciate that. Um, and for this next part, um, we also want to continue gleaning from you all about what practices keep you going? Uh, we've talked about it a bit, but um, at Green Faith, we know that there's so much wisdom to be had from the people in the group, um, that we don't hold anything special that you all don't have. Um, but often it takes us coming together and sharing what each of us does. Um, that way we can inspire and give ideas for others. Um, and so in a minute, Chelsea is going to share uh, this digital whiteboard, and we can use it to uh, type in different practices that keep us going. And we're going to split it into three categories. Um, and these aren't solid categories. They kind of bleed into each other. But the first category of practices, we labeled the head, um, like reading and researching, um, Lectio Divina, reading sacred scripture, meditation. Um, so those might be some examples that would go in that category. Uh, the second category of practice is heart. Um, so we, for example, prayer or singing, um, maybe uh, Visio Divina. I really like that of this ancient Christian prayer of just looking at an image um, and meditating on it and seeing what is God speaking into that for me. And the third category of practice we have is body. Um, maybe you are putting your hands in the soil. You're creating art, dancing walking, um, meditating, anything that is um, you feel is a more embodied practice. But we just want to, yeah, again, glean from our group um, just to see what are we using in our daily lives to keep us going. And so you should, should see uh, this whiteboard that has come up um, on this left side, the fourth one from the bottom. There is a sticky note, which you can click on and add and type in um, something there. If you're having trouble with that, um, you can feel free to type it into the chat as well, and we can 
add it for you. And also what we're going to do is share this as a resource to the rest of the participants in uh, in the Climate Finance Summit. So we'll save this image and um, and we can all collectively use this as a resource. And does everyone see where they can get new sticky notes? There's sort of a little toolbar on the left side. There's like an arrow at the top and the little pencil icon. Um, there's, I think the fifth one down looks like a little sticky note. You can just click on that and then you can drag a sticky note onto one of these squares. So let us know if you're having trouble. Again, if you're having trouble, you can just type it in the chat and, and I'll make some sticky notes for you. Thanks to all those who have written. Please continue to do. I want to read some of these off. Um, I see reading and writing poetry. Um, I see songs, singing. I see journaling, chanting, letting go. I see as a practice drumming, walking and meditation, making art, being of service. I see analysis, reading, appreciating beauty, a wide and rich list so far. Oh, under body practices, harvesting food, cooking, eating. I love that one. And thanks to those who are typing in the chat, walking in the eucalyptus forest, while listening to music, study groups, singing, and breathing in the essence of a person or situation, sensing where it lands in the body, letting that sound and breath travel through, singing to them. Forgiving ourselves and each other. That is a really good one too. I feel that personally. We're really hard on ourselves sometimes. Closing your eyes and shutting off for a moment. Dance, hula, playing ukulele, tai chi, being in worship with others, 
mindful eating ritual. These are all super wonderful. I love seeing all of the overlaps and the different sizes and everyone's names as we are co-creating something here together. So take another minute or so um, to continue finishing up. Um, but I would love uh, for some in the chat um, looking at this big list we have, this incomplete list, what practice do you want to try this week? If you could type it in the chat. Which one of these practices do you want to try this week? Daniel put in that he's been leading a Lectio Divina at his church the past year or so, and how wonderful it is to feel the words, to hear the words, noticing what is speaking to each person. Donna walking in nature, again, being surrounded in creation, taking turns listening and talking, holding a safe space for all of our emotions to release, tears, shaking, helping us to think clear, to be calm. Remembering to journal and doing that, calling and talking to old friends. Shaking off the dust for Lectio Divina and trying that again this week. Practicing more piano, gardening, closing my eyes and shutting off, finding a calm center, listening to nature sounds, especially birds on a daily walk, memorizing chants. Journaling, going outside, slowing down and stopping while in nature, noticing the interactions and interconnectedness. These are all super wonderful and I see people are still adding things. Please continue to do so. Okay, I'm appreciating the bees and flowers thanking them, slowing down and giving gratitude. I really love this list. And I really love what we've created in this time together. Grateful for everyone's offerings here and grateful for all of these different practices to try. So I really encourage you to try one out this week. See how your body feels. Where do you notice it? And trying out another one. Where does your body feel that practice? So again, thank you all. I'm going to pass it to Chelsea. Amazing. This is amazing. Just such a cool, cool thing to look at. And, uh, and I'll, I'll certain, I'll sort of, uh, zhuzh it and make it all look a little neater and then we'll share this out tomorrow. So thank you all so much for contributing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this, stop sharing the whiteboard. Um, 
Thank you all so much for your contributions. And this just felt like such a generative practice. So thank you. Um, we wanted to offer something from Green Faith. Uh, Reverend Abby Mohop put together a Spotify playlist um, with some amazing justice songs and uh, faith, faith songs. So um, feel free to open that up and get some more inspiration there. I know listening to music was something that got mentioned a lot. And obviously, feel free to sing along with that. Um, we'd also like to ask you a small favor, which is to take two minutes to fill out this survey, which I'm also putting into the chat. It's a two question survey. It'll really only take two minutes, I promise. Um, but it's really helpful for us to get some feedback and just see how this, how this session landed for you. So please let us know. Although I know there are many people out there listening in the future um, who couldn't make it tonight, but we'll be listening to the recording and we'll get feedback from you as well. So please take a minute or two to fill that out. And give us a thumbs up, use the, um, use the reaction function, give us a thumbs up or use one of the emoticons whenever you are done. I kind of feel like a school teacher saying that <laughs> but it really really does help us so thank you for filling that out thanks nana reflection to see na to see nature as beautiful names of god i love that which is a sufi practice thanks for sharing that all right i see one thumbs up Two thumbs up. Are we all giving two thumbs up to this session? <laughs> awesome. We'll take another 30 seconds for that. I hope I'm not rushing you. And yeah, in about 30 seconds, I'll pass it over to Nobuko, who's going to help us close with a song. All right, looks like we're we're coming to close with that. Thank you. Thank you all for filling that out. Nobuko. Thank you. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, I was actually wondering if maybe you could share your screen or one of us could share the screen with the lyrics. That way it'll make it easy for everyone to sing along. Awesome. Yeah, so this closing song, um, probably a lot of you have sung before. Maybe it's familiar um, at Actions. It is We Rise by Batya Levine. So I'll just obviously, unfortunately with Zoom, we can't all sing together. It would be a cacophony of sound at different tempos. So I just invite you to sing together on mute and you'll yes, sing together and imagine that we are a group of voices. So it goes like this. We rise, humbly hearted rise, won't be divided rise, with spirit to guide us rise. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here in hope, in prayer. We're right here in hope, in prayer. We find ourselves here in hope, in prayer. We're right here, we rise. All of the children rise. Elders with wisdom rise. Ancestors surround us, rise. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here. In hope, in prayer, we're right here. In hope, in prayer, we find ourselves here. In hope, in prayer, we're right here. 
we rise up from the wreckage rise with tears and with courage rise fighting for life rise in hope in prayer we find ourselves here in hope in prayer we're right here in hope in prayer we find ourselves here in hope in prayer we're right here thank you all thank you everybody thank you all so so much for joining us um for this spiritually rooted call we're so grateful Eileen and Nobuko for guiding us through this practice. And I just so appreciate each and every one of you. Your presence is so desperately wanted and needed. And we so appreciate all of the things you are doing and who you are. And so um, enjoy the rest of your evenings. And we would love it if you could come off mute and say goodbye to one another. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.